Case dismissed. This can't be happening to Bill and Marge Gray, the people who slaved to build a future for their family. Now our children, strangers all around them, parents, money, education, all gone too. What have I done? One man leaves no will at all. Another leaves a simple form will. Both lead along the road to trouble, expense, and courtroom litigation. What can be done to ensure a... Case dismissed. WMAQ, in cooperation with the Chicago Bar Association, presents Case Dismissed. This is the story of your legal rights, how vital to preserve and protect them, how easily they may be lost. Today's story takes us to the outer drive in the evening rush. Have a big day in the loop, Marge? Wonderful, dear. I'll tell you all about it when we get home. Tell me about it now. I thought you didn't like to talk when the drive's crowded like this. Oh, I could drive this stretch blindfolded. You'd better knock on wood. Well, I found everything I needed, and I even had time to buy something for each of the children. A train, an electric stove, fire engine. What a lucky bunch of kids. Yeah. I can remember when I was that age. If my mother went downtown, she brought home a sack of peppermints, maybe a little ten-cent racing car or something like that. And that was all. They're all we have, Bill. I know. I'm just as bad as you are. Only sometimes I think we overdo it these days, trying to give them everything. Well, just remember, dear, if we weren't here, there'd be no one to give them anything. Sure. I realize that, Marge. Just you and me and the kids. That's why today was a good day for me, too. How do you mean, dear? I made my will. Oh, Bill. No will. <laughs> you know, last will and testament and all that sort of thing. You're kidding. No, I'm not, Marge. I've let it go long enough. We got to talking at lunch today about what happens to our families if we die and all that. Well, what pleasant luncheon conversations you boys have. Well, you have to face it sooner or later, honey. Besides, making your will when you're fairly young is kind of like taking along a big umbrella on a picnic. Even if it doesn't keep the rain away, it'll protect your family. Keep them... Say, well, what's the matter, Mark? Oh, nothing. Nothing's the matter. You look sort of, well, strange. Oh, it's... Well, you know, dear, making a will, it's not something you do every day, I... I'm just a little surprised. That's all, dear. Well, I'd have told you about it, honey, except it just hit me today, and I said to myself, take care of it right now, Bill Gray, and you'll never have to worry about it again. Well, I, I'm glad you did, dear. Did the will cost very much? Very much. Oh, yeah. It was pretty steep, all right. Came to a total of 25 cents. Now I know you're teasing me. No, I'm not. That's all my will cost me, two bits. Now, Bill, what kind of a lawyer would make out your will for 25 cents? Who said a lawyer? Well, where else would you get a will? I got mine at a stationery store. Stationery store? Bill, maybe I should be driving, dear. No, no, I'm a strictly sober man, Mrs. Gray. Also an economical one. This noon, one of the boys happened to mention you can buy a simple standard will form at almost any stationery store. So I did. But... Is it legal, dear? Perfectly legal. Sure, it doesn't have a lot of extra fancy language. It probably wouldn't serve if you had a whole gang of people you want to leave your money and property to. But it was good enough for me. I gather you've left your worldly goods to just one person. To the girl that I married and nobody else. Thank you very much. And I hope I never have to inherit it. Likewise, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, seriously, Marge, why should I go to the extra expense of having a lawyer draw up a will when all I want to do is protect you and the kids? This simple standard will form leaves everything to you. Personal property, insurance, house, everything. Uh -huh. So I see. So, with everything legally in your hands, naturally, I can assume Jeff and Jean and Gil will be adequately taken care of, too. I simply filled in the proper blanks, had two of our secretaries witness it, and then I took the will down to our box in the bank. Well, Bill, if you're convinced it's absolutely legal, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. So let's forget the subject and talk about something pleasant. Huh? Now, there's a woman for you. <laughs> no appreciation of her brilliant and thrifty husband. <laughs> Obviously, you deserve to be cut off without a cent. <laughs> <laughs> you come to think of it, the topic is pretty morbid. How about a little radio music? All right. <sighs> I'll be glad to get home today. I will, too, dear. I hate leaving the children this long. At least it's good to know we have a dependable babysitter. Dependable? That's the understatement of the week. After the screening you gave her, Betty could join the FBI. If they hired women. Oh, don't they? Why, anybody knows they... Well... Hmm. Bill, that car coming at us. Blow up. And I can't budge out of this lane. He's out of control. He's heading straight... Get out! Mark! <laughs> Can 
I give you a hand, my friend? No, thanks. I, I seem to be all right. My name is Bill Gray. Uh, I'm Pete Parker. Glad to know you. Same here. Boy, some wreck. That lousy left front tire of mine. I knew it was thin, but I didn't think she'd go like that. Well, it sure did. I guess, uh, I guess you know where we are. Yeah, it doesn't look much like I imagined it would. No, and we don't have our hearts yet. Still, it's quiet and peaceful, Pete. Sure lucky I was alone in that wreck. Yeah. How about you? Oh, my wife Marge was with me. She's trapped in there? No. I look, she's all right. Marge isn't here at all. She got through safely. She escaped. Well, that's a lucky break for you, pal. Especially if you got kids back there. I have, Pete. Three of the best. Marge will take good care of them. You pretty well fixed, huh? Oh, not loaded, Pete, but they won't have to worry. You know, this sounds fantastic, but I just made my will today. Oh, brother, you must have been psychic. Oh, I don't believe in that stuff. Nothing involved. I just left the whole thing to Marge. She'll take it from there. Well, myself, I didn't worry about any of that stuff. You didn't believe a will? Oh, why should I? No youngsters at all, just Alma. Who's going to get a guy's dough beside his wife? Why worry about papers and stuff? I suppose you're right. <laughs> Are you pretty well fixed? No, 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 no cash to speak of. No insurance. Practically everything tied up in real estate. One office building. But Alma can get by off the rentals. Or sell it outright if she needs the cash. Are you sure she can do that? I mean, without a will saying she can? Well, I don't know why not. Do you? No. Only there always seems to be some crazy law bobbing up and queering things if you don't have everything written down in black and white. Oh, you're the worrying kind. I can see that, Bill. No. Just cautious. Well, stop worrying me, then. Tell you what. What? Uh, why don't we go down there and have a look? You mean, and see how your wife is doing? Sure. I want to prove to you once and for all you don't have to make a will if there's only your wife. Don't get me wrong, Pete. I hope you're right. You know what? After listening to you, so do I. Hello? May I speak to Dr. Smith? Mrs. Alma Parker. Yes. Dr. Smith, this is Alma Parker. You told me to call back this afternoon for the final results. Did the uh, x-rays show... They did? Oh. Well, somehow I knew it would be this way. And I'm not terribly worried about that. What concerns me is the cost of... Yes, I know that, but you said it should be done as soon as possible. A and uh, how long before I could be back on my feet, Doctor? Oh, really? That long? Oh, well, I certainly wouldn't want to relax. No. Well, Dr. Smith, I, I can't even set a date until I've made some financial arrangements. Yes. Yes, I'll phone you just as soon as I know. No, I won't delay it a minute more than I have to, Doctor. Yes, I'll call you. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. <coughs> Help me to decide what to do. Mr. Walter suggested I come here to the bank and, and see about a mortgage on my husband's office building. He is the real estate man who always handed, uh, handled the office rentals. I see. He advised me against selling the building now. Prices are down and property isn't going very fast, he said. So I understand, Mrs. Parker. Naturally, I don't want to sell the property at all, Mr. Carter. But I was afraid I'd have to. With all the cost of my operation, not to mention the expenses of a long recuperation, well, I, I'm really in urgent need of funds. Well, I'm sure you've done the wise thing in coming to your bank instead of disposing of the building at a sacrifice price. Not to mention losing your future rental income. Oh, yes. Now, how about the mortgage, Mrs. Parker? I believe you told me the deed was all clear? Well, yes, I, uh, I had it right here in my purse, Mr. Carter. It was in my husband's desk at home. Here it is. Good. Thank you. Is, uh, is it all clear, Mr. Carter? Hmm. I mean, um, it is clear, isn't it? The title? Yes, it appears to be clear, all right. For Mr. Parker. Why? What do you mean by that? This deed to the office building is made out solely in Mr. Parker's name. Oh, I certainly. There isn't anything wrong with that, is there? Well... There isn't any reason why a widow isn't entitled to all of her husband's possessions. Mr. Carter, 
Is there? No, no, please, Mrs. Parker, please don't be upset. I'm... I'm sure there's nothing wrong here. Wrong? What do you mean, nothing wrong? What could be wrong? Mrs. Parker, didn't you have your husband's will probated in court? Will? Probated? Mr. Carter, my husband left no will. Holy smoke, Bill. You don't suppose I got my wife into trouble by leaving no will? I don't know, Pete, but I wouldn't take any bets on it. Oh, man, this is the last thing on earth I wanted to have happen. Well, you should have filled out a simple will form the way I did, Pete. Then your wife would be well taken care of. But cheer up, boy. Maybe Alma isn't in trouble after all. Oh, I sure hope not. Anyway, I think she's going to see a lawyer, and that's good. Uh, let's find out what happens, Bill. Right with you, Pete. I don't really know where I stand. Mr. Carter, the banker, seemed very worried that I might not be able to mortgage my husband's property for quite some time. Well, Mrs. Parker, I don't like to raise false fears, but I believe your position may be even more serious than you suspect. More serious? Yes. Now, you're absolutely certain your husband made no will of any kind of description? Absolutely, Mr. Dewey. Oh, we've talked about it several times. Peter let my husband... We naturally assumed that it wasn't necessary to make a will, since he wanted everything to go to me. We have no children, no one else close to us, so it seemed the obvious thing to do. Obvious, perhaps, but not the wisest course, I'm sorry to say. But I, I don't understand, Mr. Dewey. What could be wiser than simply leaving everything to me? Well, it's not that, Mrs. Parker. The point is, by leaving no will, your husband may have accomplished just the opposite of what he intended. In short, he may have divided your inheritance with others. Divided? Oh, no, you must be wrong. Well, in your case, I wish I were wrong, Mrs. Parker. The Illinois law says otherwise. But divide? Who on earth must I divide with? Well, the law stipulates that if you make no will and leave a wife and no child, the wife would receive all your personal property. That means cash, savings, insurance, and so forth. But only one half of your real estate, providing... Providing? Oh, Mrs. Parker... Is your husband survived by a parent, a, a brother, a sister, nephew, or niece? Yes. He has a brother. Then, lacking a will to provide otherwise, your husband's office building belongs half to you and half to his brother. Oh, no. Not Martin. Of all people, not his brother. Oh, no. Not my brother. Not Martin. What's the matter, Pete? Your brother wouldn't make it rough for your widow. Oh, Bill, you don't know my brother. Martin owns half the money in the world. And he's devoting his life to getting the other half. Hey, that's a fine way to talk about your brother, Pete. Particularly when we're up here where you forget about all your earthly troubles. Look, Martin went his way and I went mine. He didn't want any part of the poor relation, see? Alma and I haven't seen or spoken to him for at least ten years. Well, maybe he's changed, Pete. Sometimes greedy guys do, you know. I can't believe he deliberately take his half of your real estate. I wish I could believe that, Bill. Better yet, I wish I could go back and make out a bona fide will, leaving everything specifically to Alma. What a dope I was. I'm sure glad now that I made out that paper for my wife, Marge. Yeah, you were a bright boy, all right. Gee, I wonder if that lawyer can do anything for Alma at this late stage in the game. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Martin Parker. Well, how do you do, Mr. Parker? I'm Leland Dewey. Won't you sit down, please? Thank you. I represent your sister-in-law, Mrs. Peter Parker. As so you said on the telephone. I haven't seen Mrs. Parker for many years. My wife and I were in Europe when my brother passed away. Dreadfully tragic. Yes, it certainly was. Mr. Parker, it will interest you to know that you are a beneficiary of your brother Peter. Beneficiary? <laughs> Forgive me, Mr. Dewey. To tell you the truth, I couldn't imagine him leaving anyone more than a pittance, let alone leaving any of it to me. We weren't... Uh, well, let's say we were not on the best of times, you know. Well, so I've gathered. Well, friends or not, it appears he has left you one half of his only major possession, the five-story office building. He left me one half interest in an office building? <laughs> Incredible, incredible. Yes, I dare say, and to all appearances, unintentional. Unintentional? How so? Well, Mr. Parker, your brother was not a 
careful businessman in some respects. I would say that is the understatement of the year, Mr. Dewey. Mm. Money knew no home with my brother. Well, what you say may be true, Mr. Parker. However, his thoughts were only of his wife when he failed to make a will. He believed that since he had no children or others near and dear to him, all he possessed would automatically go to his widow. Now, his only mistake was in not seeking legal counsel, which would have told him that only a will can prevent his real estate from being divided equally between his widow and his nearest living blood relation. So that's how I became my brother's heir. Exactly. Mr. Dewey, do you have any ideas to the valuation of my brother's property? No, sir, not as yet, Mr. Parker. That's where you may be able to help us. Your brother's wife has told me you're quite wealthy, own a great many units of business property yourself, and are quite an expert on real property. Oh, really? She told you that? Well, yes, yes, it's true. Uh, substantially true. But uh, how can I help you? Well, first, you might wish to appraise the building. Then, with your approval, of course, Mrs. Parker would like to sell the building in order to obtain her half of the inheritance in cash. Sell the building? But Why? So she can go on spending as freely as they used to? No, Mr. Parker. Your sister-in-law is in urgent need of a serious operation. Oh. The cost of it and the long period of recuperation that must follow are only two reasons she needs cash. There's going to be a substantial inheritance tax to pay and other expenses. Actually, she hates the idea of parting with her late husband's building. Well, this puts quite another light on the situation. But why doesn't she borrow money on the building? Since she owns only one half interest in it, she felt sure you would object to such an arrangement and would block it. Oh, she did? Well, that uh, hardly paints a very attractive picture of me, does it? Well, naturally, if you do feel so disposed, my client would much prefer to arrange a mortgage. Of course, we would have to go to court to get her appointed administrator of the estate before we could do that. I see. Hmm. Well, then, uh, Mr. Dewey, I wish you would transmit this message to my sister-in-law. I wish you would tell her that I am so disposed. Well, I'm sure Mrs. Parker will be deeply grateful. You might also mention, Mr. Dewey, that after much thought, uh, several seconds at least, I've decided I have no interest in my half share of my brother's property. I'll promptly quit claim it to her. Well, Mr. Parker, this meeting is born rather surprising fruit, if you don't mind my saying so. That's all right. I just don't happen to be quite so black as I'm painted a few years ago, perhaps I might not have... Uh... Yeah, well, no matter. Let's merely say that the acquisition of money has become less important to me in recent years. I see. Well, under any circumstances, it's very generous. Not at all, sir. Now I can see that it's going to take time to straighten out the situation, so I want you to tell Alma that I will gladly advance her funds to carry her through this critical period. Well, Mr. Parker, I can tell you that your unselfish gesture is going to mean a great deal to your brother's widow. I wish she were here this afternoon to personally... No, no, no. I think it's much better this way. Well, I know she'd want to talk to you personally and to tell you. I certainly wanted to tell you, Martin, that I deeply appreciate what you've done for me. It's not at all necessary, Alma. It's only what Pete intended. I, uh... Well, you can't imagine how I wish we'd been here when he... Well, I, I... I hope you understand, Alma. I do, Martin. And thank you. It's been a long time, Alma. Yes, it has. Perhaps now. Well, there's no recapturing lost years, Alma, but uh, perhaps you'd have dinner with Phyllis and me this Sunday. Why, uh, why, yes, Martin, yes. Nothing would please me more. Well, there's a happy ending I never imagined, Bill. Now that Alma's out of financial hot water, you can rest easy up here, Pete. Well, I sure came close to ruining her life. I wonder if I'm the only guy up here in the cloud country who left his wife in a terrible mess by not making a will. Personally, I bet there are millions of people. Hmm. In fact, only a timely luncheon conversation started me thinking about the subject. And you say you didn't even consult a lawyer? No. There was nothing to it, really. I just bought this simple little ready-made will form at the stationery store for 25 cents. Hmm. Leaves everything to my wife, Marge. But that's all I wanted to do anyway. There's plenty to take care of the whole family and give the kids a good education. <laughs> Pretty sharp lad. Making out that will on the very day an accident gets you. <laughs> Bill, you must have been psychic. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Bill! Bill Gray! Oh, Bill! Somebody's calling you, pal. You got friends up here? That sounded like Marge. But it can't be. Bill! Oh, Bill! It is Marge. Good Lord. Bill! Marge. Oh. Marge, honey, what happened? What happened? I... I had to follow you up here, Bill. 
Why? I thought you were all right. I thought the accident only brought me up here. No, Bill, I didn't escape. I came up here three days after you did. Oh, Marge, Marge. And Bill, I've been back. I've been down there and things are going all wrong. So wrong. The children. What's happening to Jeff and Jean and little Gil? Oh, Bill. Why do men always think they'll be the first to go? And that they'll go alone? That full will you made, it has no provision for the children. I know, but I thought you... Marge, what's happening down there? What's happening to the children? I, I just can't bear it. Well, there's no garden. You know we have no close relatives. But I'd have wanted Sam Collins, wouldn't you, honey? Yes, oh yes, Bill. But we can't appoint a guardian now. It's too late. I, I saw the court appointing a guardian. A man the children never even saw before, Bill. A stranger. Oh, no. You mean he'll take care of them? No, Bill. The children are being placed in a foster home. A foster home? Marge, that's impossible. It's true, Bill. They, they seem like very nice people, only... Oh, Bill, the children won't be able to have the education we always planned for them. Why not, Marge? They, they still have the money I left. But you didn't leave it to them, Bill. That's just it. You left the money to me. That self-made will form you use does nothing at all for the children. Until Jean's 18 and the boys are 21, the use of every cent of that money is going to be subject to the approval of the court. Oh, no. And how is the court going to know what we wanted them to have? Marge, Marge, this can't be true. Oh, it is true, Bill. Terrible. No, it can't be. It has to be a nightmare. This can't be happening to Bill and Marge Gray, the people who slaved to build a future for their family. No, our children, strangers all around. Parents gone, money, education all gone, too. What have I done? What can I do? If we could only go back. That's it. We have to go back, Marge. I must have the chance to do it the right way. I'll see a lawyer, and we'll appoint Sam Collins' guardian. And we'll set up a trust fund, too, and we'll... Marge, we have to go back for just a little while. Just long enough. Marge, take my hand there. Marge, where are you? Marge, we're going back, then. Marge, where are you? Marge! Marge. Marge, where are you? Honey, take my hand. Take... I'm right here, darling. Right beside your bed. Bed? Marge, this is real. You're... You're all right. Oh, Bill. Bill. And now you're going to be all right. But... Hey, what is this? Will somebody tell me what... Darling, you've been unconscious for three whole days. Don't you even remember the accident? Sure, sure. Honey, this is like coming back from... The, from a dream. Did Pete pull through, too? Pete? Sure, Pete Parker. The fellow in the other car. Oh, oh, darling, you must have been dreaming. His name isn't Pete Parker. It's, it's Ben Chalmers. He was in a coma, too. But he came out of it yesterday. Oh. He's going to be all right. Both of you were unconscious. Well, you can say that again. Out of our minds is more like it. But, Bill, what do you mean by that? Well, if Pete pulled a stupid a stunt with his estate as he told me he did in his dream. Well, believe me, the two of us idiots have a date today with a professional man. A professional man? Yes, honey. And I don't mean a doctor. And here to summarize today's case dismissed is your counselor, Dean John C. Fitzgerald of the Loyola University Law School. Dean Fitzgerald. Today our little play was sheer fantasy, but the facts were very real. Most important, of course, is the fact that there are so many different ways in which a person can go wrong in trying to handle the distribution of his property without expert advice. Many people think that only the wealthy need wills. Because they think only the wealthy leave estates. This is not true. A will is as important to people in modest circumstances as it is to those with vast holdings. 
It provides the means through which you can make the best future arrangements for those you love. To give you some plain answers to questions about your property and your heirs, the Chicago Bar Association has issued a folder, free for the asking, entitled, What About Your Will? You may have your copy simply by writing the Chicago Bar Association, 29 South LaSalle Street, Chicago. Before we leave tonight's story, I must remind you that the legal points in the adventure are based on Illinois law and may not apply in your state. May I also point out that the facts in your situation will probably differ from the facts presented in this story, and this difference in the facts may change the application of the law. So if you are in need of legal counsel and do not know a lawyer, get in touch with the Chicago Bar Association. The association maintains a lawyer reference plan which will refer you to an attorney. Next week, WMAQ and the Chicago Bar Association take up some legal problems involved in domestic relations on case dismissed. Until then, this is your counselor, Dean John C. Fitzgerald, wishing for each of you a good night, good luck, and good laws. Case dismissed. Write to the Chicago Bar Association, 29 South LaSalle, Chicago 3, Illinois, for your free booklet, What About Your Will? Case Dismissed is written by Robert Carmen and is based on information supplied by the Chicago Bar Association and its lawyer members. All characters were fictitious. Any resemblance to any person living or dead is purely coincidental. Members of the cast were Alma Platts, Rita Ascott, Arthur Peterson, Russ Reed, Paul Barnes, and Charles Flynn. Case Dismissed is produced by Betty Ross. Direction by Herbert Lateau. Musical effects were transcribed. Sound by Tom Evans. Engineering by Harold Whitterberry. And this is Lee Bennett speaking, inviting you to return next Saturday at the same time when we'll bring to light some of your legal rights involved in domestic relations on Case Dismissed. This is the NBC Radio Network.